Welcome to the studio. It's the day after last night's live stream, which was on uh, the 7th of April 2021. And this is the painting which I almost finished last night. I've added a little bit to it after the camera stopped rolling because I was running a bit over on my time. But it's loosely based on a Bob Ross painting called Grey Mountain. Um, the kit I used, well I had a couple of fan brushes, I had a couple of one inch brushes, one of them is slightly more worn, and this one is a very much newer brush, so I use this for all my darks, uh, all the chores, and this one I use for all my highlights, and of course I used a Bob Ross palette knife to break snow on the mountain. So it's just me playing for an hour on screen, um, hopefully making some helpful pointers to my painting, the reasons why things work a little bit better, just my take on things, but sit back and have fun watching it. And um, if you like the content, then just maybe give me a little thumbs up. Certainly leave some comments for me to answer, which I'm always pleased to do. And if you want to see more content and don't want to miss out, then maybe even think about uh, doing the old subscribe and ring the little bell so that you see more content from me in future. But in the meantime, sit back and enjoy the demonstration. Happy painting, people. I put something on the canvas. It'll focus on it. Okay, right, so what have we got so far? Well. This is a 1620 canvas, um, but it's actually got well, it's actually got paper on it. Um, I know that some folk oh, move me over there, but I know that some folk sort of um, said, "What do you, what surface are you painting on here?" And this is paper, okay? This is a, a piece of um, wallpaper, yeah, um, and it textured. It's it's like um, like a um, how do you describe it? It's, uh, it's like an embossed paper. Thank you, Debbie. Thanks for letting me know you can hear it all. Um, hi there, Crystal. Yep, hi, Crystal. Um, so yeah, this is like an embossed paper. It's like a, like a wallpaper. And I, I went online to have a, a look and see if I could find um, a brand of wallpaper that looked sort of like Hessian, really. And I kind of found this one that looked really like texture of, of, of paper. I ordered a roll and it turned up and would you believe it? It's absolutely lovely. And all I do is I just tape it to a canvas. I got I got all the bounce of a canvas um, and I give it a coat of white acrylic paint. And that means that I've got a practice canvas. I can paint on it. Uh, if it's uh, if it's one of my less successful paintings, uh, it makes a great uh, fire starter for a bonfire or um, it goes up like a good one, you don't need fire lighters. But if it's something I like to keep, I can store them um, so it's easy enough to keep to one side. And I've been I've been painting on paper now, like this, for probably about 10 years. And stuff I painted 10 years ago hasn't changed at all. So um, it's a great way of actually saving yourself a few pennies if you're uh, looking to sort of try and kind of keep your costs under control. So you can use lining paper, but just give it a coat of acrylic paint to seal it up. Wow, my little eye symbol in the corner of my screen says there's 22 people viewing. Got to be an all-time record. <laughs> anyway, you're all very welcome to see me paint. So what have I got done apart from getting the liquid white on there? Well, you might notice those of you with eagle eyes will spot... I think you're back in focus here. You might notice these in the corner here, these these little things. These are map pins. Is there anything you use for, for putting in notice boards and things? And I put these in and I actually use my brush to measure. So it's about the length of a one inch brush. Um, and this is a very easy way of actually knowing where your horizon line is going to be. So if you're, if you're sort of painting away and your mountain starts to slip a little bit south, you can quickly see where, where these two pins are in your canvas. So it's a nice, easy way of spotting uh, where you are with your painting. Okay. As I mentioned, I've got my liquid white already on board. I'm going to get paint on my fingers now, so I'm going to have a baby wipe to hand. Um, and first things first, I'm going to just test my canvas. I'm going to use a different finger on a different spot on my canvas, so it's that finger, that finger, little finger, and thumb, and I'm going to have a look at my hand, and I want you to have a look at my fingerprints, see them, you can see my prints, all the little ridges, okay, that's really what you want to see, 
if what you can see is that, okay, then you've been a little bit mean with it and you haven't got enough liquid white on there and it's going to be too dry. Whereas if you've got more like that, which looks like you dipped your finger in ice cream, that's a little too wet and you're going to end up in trouble. So you want somewhere between those, those two, which the other ones are. So before you start painting, always, always, always check your canvas. It's just, uh, you just know the day you don't do that will be the day you paint that humdinger of a painting, that absolute winner. And before you get to the bottom, your canvas will be dry and you'll be screaming. Okay, so I might have mentioned my palette. I'll just quickly run through it again. There's my palette for this evening. Um, I have titanium white. I have a mountain mix, which I've made up, which is some uh, phthalo blue, some crimson, and that brown, and some midnight black. I have some runny black. I'm trying to make a break for it. It won't get far. I have some lavender, which is mainly crimson, about five parts crimson, one part phthalo blue. And that's a nice sort of um, bright sort of lavender colour. Give it a little sample. Yeah, it's got a nice pinkish colour. People get frightened when they see you do that. But don't worry. We'll fix that. Okay. Um, I've got some cad yellow, Indian yellow, which is that one, yellow ochre, sap green and some and some phthalo green and some bright red. These colours look a little weird under this lighting. Um, let's change my colour temperature a little bit. Okay. That looks a little bit truer to the colours I'm using. Okay, so that's that's the colours I'm going to be using. And I'm actually going to carry on using this old brush. It's got some liquid white on it. And I am just going to give that a very quick dry clean. Okay. Um, of course, we all know that Bob would have washed that in thinners, yeah, and then covered the studio in paint. Well, <laughs> I hate cleaning up. <laughs> so, so my very first color I'm going to go into is my Indian yellow, and, and I'm pulling towards where my thumb is down here. Think of this like a clock face. You're always heading for your thumb. That way, you're not kind of crossing over another paint um, and Indian yellow is a very transparent color okay it doesn't have the same strength as ochre so you can be a little bit more adventurous with this you can get a little bit more punchy with the color okay and and I know my mountains gonna live kind of in this sort of area so I want to make sure I get a good amount of this color either side but I don't necessarily want to put it right through the center but so let me just jump into my so other programs here, here so I know where my horizon um, line is going to be. Push me out of the way. Okay. And just like crisscrosses. Okay. What you don't really want to do is paint a very sharp line through there. You want a nice jagged line. Because the last thing you want to do is have trouble blending colours into each other. And I sometimes see people, they kind of paint a stripe across the canvas. Um, and then it's tough to actually then get the next colour to do its thing. Okay. I'm an absolute sucker for Indian yellow. I love it. I love it a lot. So I'm, I'm going to put on a little bit extra here. I can get my camera to stay in focus for a minute. As soon as there's something more interesting there for it to look at, it'll, it'll stay, it'll stay fixed. Okay. And of course, whatever we put up here in the sky, we have to add to the water, don't we? Okay. So let's get my Indian yellow. Okay. Right, if I put a fan brush right there. My camera has something to look at. Okay. Now, you want to be mirroring what you do above, so you want to be putting it directly underneath it, and you want to be going edge to center. Okay. You want to come in with a little flick. And don't leave a little gap in here again. 
folks sometimes we, we tend to leave a little bit of a pale area you don't really need to do that I'm going to vary the strokes I, I kind of want like a diagonal sort of area of light on my painting remember the, the Indian yellow is the weakest color so it's probably going to get beaten up by the other ones okay and I put plenty on there and again same for the other side and flick across and then give a little lift now there is a tendency folks and again I'm going to stress this a few times through the course of this little demonstration that any kind of little mistakes and errors I make any little oopsies I make uh, are based upon me what I've done in the past how I got it wrong um, it's not if I poke fun at anybody I'm, I'm the biggest target because I've done everything wrong you could imagine for many many years so if you see me make a mistake and you think he's poking fun at me I'm not I'm poking fun at myself because I've done it plenty of times so let me just scroll down here Whoa, Pam hi Pam hi Caitlin Dave K Dave Drain well wow, lots of eyes looking today so here we go edge to center now so that was a little mistake I was going to show you we get kind of what, what I call what I call sort of um, window wiper arms where we kind of don't move our elbows and what happens is we kind of start over here and we end up kind of coming off down here so we end up kind of doing that kind of shape and it looks like a window wiper going backwards and forwards okay and we, we tend to do it from the other side as well sometimes and it kind of does this thing where it looks like it's going down into a plug hole so be very careful not to do that folks make sure you go edge to center okay. I'm going to quickly throw on some yellow ochre I've been cleaning my brush and these two are good friends and this yellow ochre is a little more punchy it's got a little bit more coverage and I'm going to put this right on here and again because I had jagged edges here it can keep it in easier to blend okay, and get some on the other side sky I want in the water and I'm going to overlap so I'm going to keep some of this Indian yellow and of course some of this yellow ochre across and make sure you spend a good amount of time on blending on skies um, this is something I do see on some posts um, and I'm guilty of it as well when I was starting out put that back in the center then my my camera's got something to look at um, this was something I was guilty of um, and I still see it occasionally on, on, on paintings is where we're so excited to get started with our paintings that we kind of forget sorry this paint this is not going to stay put that we kind of forget to blend things a little bit and somewhere towards the end of the painting you look at your painting you finally get up off your chair and stand back and you see dark corners and you see stripes like none of these things are obvious when you're sitting down from where I'm sitting right now these big dark marks don't show up but on the screen which is like the camera that makes it much further away I can see them but in reality they're, they're too sort of soft and I can't actually see any of that I'm determined to make this brush sit here Oh, get you one way or another. There we go. Um, so, do you take a few moments just to blend your skies, blend your waters nicely. Don't rush through it. I know the temptation is to just get going and throw this all together, and it doesn't really matter. But, folks, it does. It does matter. Spend time blending skies. Now, bear in mind, I've got a tree going through here. I've got a big mountain in the centre, so. I'm probably not going to see very much of this 
So don't neglect it. Don't neglect it. Okay. Next colour. Shred into some bright red. Hands up who knows why we use bright red next. Anybody, buddy? Answers on a postcard? Why do we put bright red next? That's the question. Pop to brownie points for those who get it right. Put that back in the centre again. For my camera to see. Nobody knows why. Because it looks nice. Yeah, yeah, it looks nice. It looks nice. But the principal reason why we, we put that on there. Yes, Dave Drain got it right. Yeah, you're the first one, Dave. So we don't get green skies because I'm going to be using some lavender colours on here. And that's made with blue and crimson and all very purple. The blue colour is still active and you can get green skies. So you'll very often see Bob use this classic sort of yellow, red and blue combination in a painting. So this is a quite a, quite a useful combination. Again, I'm going to just make sure I and what's in the sky? You guessed that. Can be down here in the water. Let's quickly get this done. Crack on. Green, well done. And you got it. Strange thing with green skies. You think you wouldn't see one. And then one day you'll see a green sky. If you're up, crack it all. And you'll suddenly look out one day and you'll see a faint green colour in the sky. And I have tried to paint, oh sorry, I have tried to photograph that green colour. And <laughs> I can't get it to come out. It's like a faint green colour. My my painting looks really strange on this screen. Give me just a second. I'm going to see if I can get a better looking version of this. Wow, it's, it's changed my... Nope. No, that's the way the computer sees it. I will have to have a play with this next time because this is a little bit... The colours I'm actually seeing here are a lot, lot softer. A lot more pastel. Let's scrub that out a little bit more then. Let's scrub this out. Okay. My final colour is going to be lavender and again I didn't clean my brush a bit risky I could make a green colour but looks like it's not a risk nice soft purple colour And again, I'm going to make sure I get these colours really nice to into each other. Okay. I have a little bit of red. That red in these corners just a little bit more. Okay. Ooh. Any hard lines anywhere? None that matter. As I said, I've got other things coming into play here. 
Now the last little bit is to put some lavender down the very bottom here. Um, I'll just be just out of shot slightly, so let me just zoom you out a little bit. Let me keep you down. There you go. Now I'm going to commit a deadly sin. I'm going to be going the wrong way with my brush. And you see what happens. I always tell people to pull edge to center. And when you come across, lift off. But if you forget and you start going center out, you kind of create these really hard lines on your canvas. Uh, it's a stinker. Really hard to get rid of those things. So always remember, go edge to center, edge to center. So there we're going to go. Pitch to center. I think I'm just about done. If I get a little green down in here, that's okay. Put my brush back in there, get it back in focus, and there we go. Pitch to center. And I don't really want this pure white color right through here, so I'm going to just do some nice long flat strokes. See how that line still shows there? I've got over that a few times now. So. Okay. Nice. Long flat strokes. That's nice. And no window wiper hands. No window wiper on. Okay. So. Time to get my palette knife into action. Just give it a little white. Okay. So I'm going to go into my mountain mix. I'm going to pull my mountain mix down. Pull it down flat. I can't think of a single reason why I would have my paint anything other than flat when I want to pick up a little roll of paint. Um, the only time my paint is in a ball is when I'm mixing it, but as soon as I finish it, I pull it flat every time. And I pull it down. I'm, I'm right-handed, so I'm going to pull it down with the face of my knife. I'm going to turn my knife over with my palm up, and I'm going to slide up and pick up a little roll of paint. Okay, a little roll of paint on my knife. Okay. And I want to figure out where the top most peak of my mountain is. Let me just slide this back up a fraction here. There we go. So this is kind of an important thing because you want to decide early in the painting where you're going to position things. You really don't want to be putting your mountain too low. You certainly don't want to get your mountain too high and too central because that just looks like a great big kind of exit sign. Leave this way. That's an exit sign for your eyes. So what I like to do is come across about one third across and about three or four inches from the top and put a little mark there. And I now know where the most the topmost peak of my mountain is going to be. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just literally going to just make some little teepees, little witches. There we go. I know where the bottom of my mountain is supposed to be. I can't go any lower than that. So I'll just make a couple of little TP shapes, okay? And get your finger on the back of that knife and scrape it out. Really press. Kind of a, kind of a, kind of a low flat mountain range today. Yeah. I don't get too bent out of shape about the edges of my mountains too much. At this stage, it's just it's too early to be starting to worry about things like that. Get you a little closer. There we go. But what I do want to do is make sure I remove all the surplus paint. Okay. Now, one of the little things I thought could happen on my paintings has happened, and I've got a green mountain. Okay. There's a lot of yellow on here, a lot of crimson, and a lot of other colours. And my mountain mix has got a lot of blue in it. So naturally, I get a green mountain. But it's okay, because green and grey kind of work together. Um, it's not too bad, but it's one of the principal reasons why Bob would paint sometimes very 
half colour mountains like grey mountains but then you get green bases like this um, you try and paint this as a pure white mountain with blue highlights on it and it starts to look a little odd so if you paint muted colours like greys you're, you're on a winner now this looks a little static my, my up angles and my down angles are a little a bit even it looks like little, little triangles almost and it, it's kind of nice to start off like this but then to make some little changes so I'm going to just a little roll of paint just, just a little roll and, and maybe I'm going to grow it a little bit and I'm going to put a few little humps and bumps and lumps on it Bob called those yahas. I don't know what that means. I think it's Native American for bump. Again, get vigorous, Rick. Scrape it out. Maybe, maybe that angle there wants to be a little steeper up and a little bit softer going down. So straight away I've kind of got rid of my very even looking mountain shapes here. I may even change it a little bit more. But we can grow a little bit taller like that. That looks more interesting, doesn't it? But at this stage I am not going to get too worried about edges um, things not being perfect um, by the time I get some snow on here I can fix all those edges up so don't try and paint mountains with perfect edges you're, you're just going to wear yourself out um, just get the basic shape right get something pleasing to the eye and just dry cleaning my old brush the one I use for my skies and just get something that's pleasing on the eye but don't, don't worry about edges they, they'll get picked up later on you can see what happened on here I kind of there's my there's my pin on the edge here and I kind of I sunk a little low that's okay I like to do I like to do my mountains a little kind of smile in the front and when I'm when I'm sweeping out the, the paint of my mountain I lay my brush on its side, on its tips, okay? I don't lay it in flat. That just pulls all the dark out the top of the mountain. And the idea is you just want to take out the surplus paint, but you want to keep the top of your mountain peaks nice and dark. Um, that helps with the contrast when you're trying to get light and shadow on your mountains. Okay, so you're not looking to drag this all the way down. You want this to fade out. And if I pull my painting around a little bit. Hmm. Already I've got my kind of, you can already kind of see the kind of shape of my mountain. I've already kind of got it figured out, haven't I? That was lucky, wasn't it? You think it was lucky? Yeah, pure luck. Okay, there's my, my basic mound shape, it's already a little bit 3D, let's put some snow on it, let's zoom around a little teeny bit, there we go, so I've got my palette knife ready, my camera seems to be happy of focusing now, it's got something to look at, okay, so my palette, I've got I've got two blobs of titanium white out just in case it saves me having one. And again, if I'm going to be picking that paint with my palette knife, I want it flat. But in my, my colour here, I'm going to add just a, just a tiny dot of bright red. There's another question coming up for you folks. So, some heat apps on. Why do I put a tiny little dot of red? in my white and keycaps on and there's a good reason for it when I say I add a dot if I get that in focus for you it is almost white almost but it 
just not quite perfect white. So there's a clue. Why do I do that? Okay, so there's my highlight color. I'm going to take a little bit of white. I'm going to put a little tiny drop of black into it. I'm going to just marble. This is my gray color. I'm just going to marble that up. I'm going to leave it like that for a minute. We'll see how that one looks out. I've got my suspicions that that isn't going to be quite what I want. But we'll leave that to sit and see if we can make it work, okay? So the question was, why do I put a little tiny drop of red into my white? And the answer is not because it looks pretty. Okay. Just having a gulp of tea. Okay. If I take my mountain and I split the mountain with a nice jagged line, that's going to be kind of like the, the breaking point of my mountain. And if I have someone on skis going this way, he's going to have the sun coming to him, so he's going to have his sunglasses on. And the guy going down that side of the mountain, he's going to have his jump on because he's in the shadows. He's on the cold side of the mountain. So it's good to kind of remember which, which side your mountains are going to split. Highlights and shadows, okay, highlights one side, shadows the other, but don't forget, if it's highlights on that right side, it's highlights on that right side as well, you can't have them back to front, okay, you can't have two suns in the sky, just one. They're not the same as the shadow colour? Mm, well, that's kind of, but that's my shadow colour, which is grey, and that's my highlight colour, which is white with a hint of red. So they're already different. So that was a good idea, but not quite not quite the reason why. Okay, so I'm going to just pick out these little scratch scratch marks. But this, if this helps you when you're when you're painting mountains to plan your mountains out then by all means scratch in some little details like that it really kind of helps okay so i'm going to wipe my knife and i'm going to get a little roll of my titanium white and put a little tiny drop of red in it and i want a nice even roll of paint i can't stress this enough folks if i can get my knife to show up on screen can you see that little bump of paint like a little french baguette Okay, got to get it sitting up off the knife. It's got to kind of sit up in a little kind of finger because you're going to hold the knife, finger and thumb around the metal bezel. These fellows, they just rest on the hand. They, they do nothing more than just kind of steer. These are the ones that actually hold the knife. And the other thing you want to have happen is for the knife to actually just glide over the, the surface of the mountain. As soon as you put that finger on the back of your knife, you're in trouble. The stickiness of the paint will do the job. You don't have to press. Okay, so I'm going to go point of my knife to the point of my mouth. Let me zoom you in a little bit. There we go. Get you there a little bit higher. There we go. So get the point of your knife to the top of your mountain with a handle towards you. And the action is from there to there. So that's where I'm going to go with my knife handle. It's going to go from towards me to the side of the canvas. So it's going to swing around. It's not going to do that because that just leaves a skinny line. And it's not going to be laid flat because when you start moving it just dumps the paint. You're going to get your handle up. Up, 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 up. Okay, about 45 degrees. And I'm going to just touch. And there's nothing holding the paint the palette knife to the paint at this stage is literally just the weight of the paint will do the job. I'm going to rest my thumb on top, just enough pressure so I don't drop the handle. So even doing it with just the weight of the knife can get me a break. Can you see what happened? I unloaded all my paint. So it's Super light. Around and drop the handle. So it's kind of a two actions in one. And more paint. We come right up underneath that one. Touch. Get the handle up. 
Let's see how I lift the, kind of lift the paper up there. And you shouldn't hear the knife at all. Be silent. If you can hear, it means you actually pressed a little bit too hard. Light with a touch of red to reflect the sky color. Yeah, it could be. Hey, you could be absolutely right with that. It could be just exactly that. But you know. It could be so very nearly right. And certainly a good suggestion. So you see my colours just going on. Keep your handle up. And it kind of float over to the side. Just let it kind of float over to the side. And um, painting slow with this technique is actually trickier than painting a little faster. So painting it slow isn't actually difficult. Now you see I've got a little bit there missing at the very top. I don't want that. I want my snow to go right to the edge of my sky. And again, that's something I used to get wrong and I would look at my finished painting and I would see the edges of my mountain would have these black lines all around them, like they'd been cut out of a magazine and I'd just been clumsy with where I cut the paper. Make sure you get your snow right to the edge, which is another reason why I say don't fuss with the edges of your mountains too early on. You're going to put the snow up against the sky, so you don't have to worry about these edges yet. The snow will fix your problem. Okay, so I got kind of two nice mountain peaks there. I want to swipe my knife. So, it's so well organized that I even got a rubbish bag. Okay, so my, my shadow color. What do you think of my shadow color? Good enough? Um, I got my suspicions, folks. Let's have a look. I got a smaller roll of paint this time. Smaller roll of paint. Okay. And this time I'm going to be skiing this direction. I'm going to be skiing away over to the left now it's kind of awkward doing this on camera because i'm sat i'm sat right square to my painting if you see where i'm sitting here i'm going to try and shuffle my bum to the left a little bit because i want to get a nice swing with my knife without bumping into me and watch what happens here this is a little nice little touch here getting nice and close i'm going to start just behind that light color there my my highlight color and i'm going to bump that snow out of the way Bump up and then go. Bump up and go. So if you've got a very straight line there and you want to kind of change the shape of it, you can push it. You can push it out of the way. So when you get these very straight lines, you can move it. Okay, now my suspicions about my shadow colour are kind of coming true. Oh yeah, try this. Have a good go at this, Paul. Have a look at my shadow colour and have a look at my highlight colour. You'll see why my suspicions of things were kind of not going to work out too well. My highlight and my shadow are too close to each other. It's hard to see which one is which. This shadow colour needs to have a little more black in it. The contrast isn't there. Not quite. And again, this is something I used to get wrong. I used to look at my mountains and wonder why they look so flat. So when I look at my my shadow colour, I knew this was going to be a little on the, the light side. So I'm going to marble a little more black. Give my grey colour a little bit more oomph. And then we'll do, we'll do that one again. Get rid of that. Throw it in the pile. There we go. Now we've got a grey. Get the wrong paint. Bump that. Now there's a little more contrast to it. Could even be a little 
little bit more, I think. But now you can see a highlight and a shadow side. More even, but more, more easy to, to recognize and to see. Okay. Bring up my color a little bit more. And again, I'm going to go up beside this one here. There's only a small roll of paint. Keep my hand up nice and high. Go up behind that color. Give it a little bump. And try it away. And you see me do that. See what happens to paint that. It kind of drags it over the edge. And you get a little bit of white on the back of the knife. It gives you such a cool effect. It looks like these little mountain peaks. Just looking like they're blowing over the edge. real bit pink. But I've done a real straight line there again, haven't I? Tiny bit of blue or black. Yeah, I could use blue or black. Yep, that's absolutely right. I could have actually put a little bit of mountain colour in here because that's actually got quite a lot of blue in it. So you're absolutely right. I could use mountain colour. In fact, I often do put a little mountain colour in. It's a little bump. And you see that little, little kind of effect again getting on there. This is kind of straight looking. And I, I actually want to put another mountain peak in here. And if you're going to put another mountain peak in, don't try and paint over the top of all that. Scoop that away. Okay, put it back on your shadow pile. A little red. A little bit more pinky this time, but that's okay. I'm good with that. Okay, a little bit of off my color. Let's have a little look and I'll tell you if it's going to work or not. This time I'm going to paint over to the left a little bit more. I'm going to do a sort of G, so I'm going to go left and then go back. A little letter J. as I go. Got some nice darks in there. You hear my nice shaping on this side because there's so little shadow colour there that my knife touches down really quick whereas on the on the snowy side it doesn't touch down so fast. A little bit bigger roll of paint. Let's have a little something in there. Okay. Just playing with mountains, it's, it's um, people find it stressful when they start out because they kind of worry about making mistakes. But when you get kind of used to playing with them, it can actually be real good fun. Think about how this joins onto there, so I want to just kind of vary this a little bit. Okay, so think about how things going to work, how they're going to join onto each other. Okay, make sure your mountains sort of have a you know, the right look to them. So let's get that kind of go down there and kind of curve up. Get rid of that dark line there a little bit. This one. Little dip in there. Now here's a nice little tip for you. If you find some of your edges lack that sort of impact, you, they're not kind of giving you that kind of um, look that you're you're looking for. That kind of really nice kind of a punch. Use your palette knife, and this this is kind of useful. Um, if you look at my mountain, you see there's actually three distinct parts to it. I have highlight, I have shadow, but I have the base mountain color, that greenish tint still there but we're inclined occasionally to just overcook it what happens is we just end up creating a two color mountain and all the dark shadows gone and, and this is an easy way of putting it back because you've got a big pile of mountain color here i'm going to get just the tiniest little bit on the end of my palette knife and, and if you've got a, an area that looks kind of bland and kind of doesn't really give you much then then take a tiny little bit just a little 
bit of drama needs to come out. I've got a little deeper shadow under it. I'm just using the smaller blade of the knife. See how that pops that edge out? Let's pull that round and up. And you can do this in several little spots in your mouth. Anywhere you want, create a little bit more kind of depth of color where you think the mountain lacks a little bit. But don't overdo this, folks, because it does get a bit kind of much. It's just nice here and there, just to throw these little bits of dark in here and there. Boy, time is flying tonight. We're well behind in my time. Is there anything good on the telly tonight? <laughs> Sorry, no problem. My, You're slow tonight. My painting, I'm slow tonight. Did I tell you the reason why I put a little bit of red into my white? I forgot to tell you, didn't I? So I remember to tell you at the end, or should I tell you now? I'll tell you now. Okay. The reason why I do it sometimes is because if, if I want to fine-tune my mountain... And I use white paint right from the get-go. If I use pure white colour right from the very start, then I don't have a, 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 a final highlight colour that's really going to stand out. I use my white option right from the start. So by tinting my colour, by using a little tiny drop of red in my white, it means if I want to come back with some pure white, some absolute clean white, I can come back at the very end of my painting, I'll do it now for it, and I can add a sparkler because everything else is just a pinky colour. I'm not sure if that's going to show up on the screen, but those edges now, they really pop. So I use off-white colours so that I can make my edges absolutely sparkle. So that's the reason why I used a little tiny drop of red in my white, just to give my, my mountain a little bit more sparkle. The reason why I asked is there anything good on television tonight, because if you want, i I got about 10 minutes left in my allotted time here, which I give myself to do this, but I really want to kind of get a couple of trees in here. So, I'm just quickly and knock out this bottom edge here. I just want to kind of get when you're tapping out, be sure to follow the lines. This mounting peak goes over to here. This one goes here. This one's coming this direction. So make sure you follow the line of your mountains. I want to get rid of this line here. nice mountain there haven't we it was kind of okay I'm going to put in just a couple of little footy things in here and because I know that the colour I'm using has got a lot of blue in it it's going to make me spin a nice green colour so I'm chasing, chasing the hair around my canvas so I've got my nice clean new brush That's my mountain it's colour which has got blue in it just in here I'm going to put in a nice, nice little um, foothill tap, give my brush a little push, just a little push, not much paint, just a little push, and well, just half an overlap. I trap a little bit of yellow in here, let me just zoom you in, I trap a little bit of yellow in there. So it looks like that little misty area, so I don't get too close up under your mountain, you'll ruin the mountain. should the bottom edge of this be? Should it be going, should I have land that goes like this? It goes up at the bottom and then have my water line going uphill. Does that look good? No, it doesn't look very good. When I'm painting, I'm always imagining that this is like a theatre. So what I'm imagining is that I'm 
I'm kind of looking into into the stage of the theatre. So I want everything to kind of drew, drop down a little at the edges, and it kind of opens up the center of my paint. So it draws my eye to the back. If everything at the edges is going up, it's kind of off-putting because your eyes don't see the world going up at the edges. Your eyes actually see the world going slightly down at the edges. All to do the shape of the eye. We perceive the world left and right of the centre of us is actually going slightly downhill. I've got all my kind of raggedy edges there. I have to be the cameraman and everything tonight. Okay. And I'm going to just press, pull down. And use the tips of the brush to kind of dig in here. Kind of dig in, grab a little colour, and pull down. Keep the scale about the same. So where it's taller, go taller. Where it's shorter, go shorter. And which way do I go? Do I go that way with my brush or do I go that way with my brush? Very good, Noel. That's actually a good idea. You could use red in your white, stop it going green. That would work. Red and green make brown. Okay, Christmas brown. But a tiny little bit of red in there would actually stop the effect happening as well. So you, you're partly right with that. But let's say my main reason is to give me uh, the opportunity to be using a, a little bit of bright, pure white colour. So edge to centre or centre to edge? It's always edge to centre, especially when you're doing reflections, because the last thing you want is a dark line right here in the middle of your nice painting. You do not want that. That's not pretty. I'm going to use a little tiny bit of this titanium white paint, I haven't got your liquid white out. And just go and press. Press firm. And really push. Really press into the canvas. And then you're going across to the side. Keep your water lines nice and level. And you see, I'm using dirty paint. I'm not using clean, clean, clean paint. I'm using grubby paint. I want my water lines. I'm not going to be competing with my mountain. My mountain is the king. These are going to be just a little less than bright. Okay. All the time, I'm thinking about how the whole thing starts to hang together. So there's my mountain, a little bit of land there. Let me just put in some, some little bit of land on the side here. I'm going to, I'm going to pick up my old brush. I'm going to go through my dark colour here. And, and you see the brush, it's got like a fold in it. Okay. I'm going to pull that folded edge towards me. And turn it on its side. Can you see what I'm doing? Bring the hand away from me and drag the brush on direction. I'm opening my brush and I do it. I'm forcing the bristles to splay and then I'm going to turn each side to the top and I'm going to press in some bristles. Reach side towards me, put it through, go on a little push. Spin that brush apart and paint some little bushes. And you can see what I'm doing here, I'm kind of pressing and I'm kind of let the brush kind of come back. It kind of creates this little kind of shape here. Let me see if I can get my camera. It'll miss a little better for you because you know, folk trouble themselves a lot and get into trouble with their little bushes. Okay, so it's folded side to the, to the top. Start in some paint. Fill that in. Good dark colour. I'll do this. This will be the last little thing I do tonight, folks, because I think the time is getting on over with it. And I know some of you 
we've got commitments elsewhere. I'm going to just fill this in. Good dark colour. I'll do some more stuff on the other side when the camera stops rolling and I'll finish this painting off. Instead, if any of you are kind of missing some of the time and you can't see all the demonstration you want to watch this, I'm going to post this whole demonstration on my YouTube channel, which is Paul Anderson Art. You can see it's at the bottom of the screen just down, just kind of just down there. I've got it written down. So that's that's the YouTube channel. You can go on there, you can view it all for free. There's no, no kind of fees or anything. You just just, see, just view it and, and if you can follow me and paint, that's great probably. And there's a few other kind of nice little paintings on there that you can do. Now you see the shape of these bushes here. Not terribly helpful. I've painted myself a hedge, which is okay in one respect, but difficult if you're trying to highlight this because you can't see one bush from another. Outside in. Outside in. Not sure what that means, Debbie. Now, I was going inside out, pushing out from the center like that. Okay. This shape here is not terribly helpful. So I'm going to give you a tip. When you're actually doing these little bushes and pulling through your brush and you're opening up, up the bristles, think about painting the individual little bushy shapes. Give them names. <laughs> that's what we were told. Give them names. And that's Bert. This is going to be Julie. This is Henry. So instantly I can see three individual shapes there and not try to paint a hedge. And it's so much easier when you try and do your highlighting. You can actually see a shape that you can follow. And this I've done with the dark paint and it's nice and textured. Okay. Switch brushes to my nice clean dry brush. And I say this hasn't had much use it's quite it's quite new still it's quite fluffy and soft so that's going to be working quite nice if your brushes are getting a little bit kind of bristly and a bit old getting highlights to stick and, and get just even highlights on the brush isn't fun it's not easy to do so if your brushes are a little bit kind of getting a little bit worn down and you're struggling check the conditions of your brushes they really got to be in a little bit better condition I, I have two brushes. I have an old one which I use for the, the dark work. It's got my little orange tip on it. And I keep a nice new brush for my highlights and my soft blending. Okay. Uh, and when this one wears out, this one becomes a refugee and it ends up in my box of also rands. And this one becomes the new worn down brush and then another one comes along. Okay. So this time I'm going to bring my brush through the paint. And I'm going to take it through the paint again, fold it side towards me, pull it through that paint. Oops, let me give room for the video. Okay. So I'm brush mixing these two together. Take a little bit of Indian yellow with it. Put some of that through. And give it a little press. Let me see if I get that for you in focus. Give it a little press. And before you touch your canvas, check the end of your brush. Try to get in focus. Can you see the end of that brush? See how nice and open that is? It's like lace work. That's how your brush is going to look. If it looks like it's just been dumped in the paint, it's never going to work. It has to be open. Okay. So, I'm going to try to work around the canvas here. Nice and gentle. Ooh, harsh with the dark colour, but this time you're going to be gentle. And the same process, you're going to start, you're going to just touch, you're going to lean the handle back a little bit, and you're going to just let the bristle go forwards, give it a little imprint, and come back. Okay? Give it an imprint, and come back. I want my colour to be a little brighter, that doesn't show up on screen very well. Watch it a little bit. Let me pet my colours up a little bit. There we go. And I 
as they run out of colour. Do the, the shadowy bits at the bottom there a little bit more. See, so that's the way you're getting your brush nicely loaded with paint. You're getting a nice lacy shape with it. And you might find that when you do that, you pick up a little glass. Don't contaminate your colour, just flick off. You don't need to dry clean it like a crazy person, just get rid of some of it. Make your reflections pull from. Oh, right, okay, yep, gotcha, Kelly, yep, you're absolutely right, yep, edge to centre. The, the messages are messages from you guys are arriving about 10 minutes after I've done it. Okay, so I reloaded my brush there again, I press it into the paint, give a little push, spring the bristles. Have a look at the end of your brush. Make sure it doesn't look like the end of your thumb. It should be nice and lacy, nice and open. Rounded side to the top again. Touch, touch, touch. And you can pretty much highlight one little bush at a time doing this. If you can get more than one bush out of a load of paint, then you're better than I because I find I can't do more than kind of one at a time. Maybe I sometimes get two small ones. But more often than not, you're going to probably find yourself unable to get more than maybe one little bush out of each load of paint. Okay, got a little dark shadow in there. I'm going to need that little shadow. What do we call this one? This was Henry, wasn't it? It's Henry. A nice little highlight on that one there. Knock off the surplus. I'll put out a little bit more cad yellow. Makes it a little brighter for the screen. Cad in yellow. Oh, that's nice. That's a nice colour. There you go. I'm just loaded my brush. A little, little bit of dark in there, I can just squeeze a little bush in there. But don't crowd them in too hard because you need a little shadow here and there. But we always joke you need somewhere for the little bunny rabbits to sleep. I guess he was right. Look into your gardens and you'll see that between all these little bushes, there's a lot of dark colour. Being green mode tonight. There we go. So we've got a nice little bunch of bushes in there. And these little dark areas are kind of useful because they give you places to grow some little fir trees. You came in late. Hi Raymond, nice to see you. What kind of paper is the paint on? Right, this is wallpaper. Okay, it's it's got a kind of a texture like um, if you look at if you look at this wallpaper it actually looks just like it's been printed it's been actually printed on it looks like hessian almost um, so it looks exactly like the same surface as, as a canvas so um, it's it's kind of it's textured just like uh, just like canvas so that's it that's what it is um, I'll leave some links um, when I post this on YouTube I'll leave links to some of the materials I'm I'm using here so you can see what I've got. I am going to paint the fastest fir tree in the West. Fan brush. Back to my dark colour. And a little bit of a green colour to it. It's a green and a very light green colour. On both sides. Brush. Load it well. Give it a little wiggle. Wiggle it to open it. Okay. And the important thing to know about fir trees is you don't know where they start and where they stop. Okay. I'm going to have a little fir tree about there. What do we reckon, folks? Yes or no? Well, I reckon that's probably not going to be very useful because it looks like it's holding up the edge of my mountain. Okay, so I would say either start inside the shape of the mountain or go for it and paint a proper sized tree. Okay, 
I'm going to go both sides of my paintbrush again. Downy trees or uppy trees? Uppy trees. Okay. I'm going to get my brush handle up. Okay, I'm going to have it facing towards, and I'm going to get on one corner, and I'm going to touch with just the corner of my brush. And this creates little smiles. Kind of a little sort of smiley shape. And I like to put in the middle of my fir tree first. That dark shape. So I've got a tall skinny kind of tree. Okay. Once you've got a tall skinny kind of tree, then you can give it a Sunday lunch. Okay. But once you've got that middle column, you're, you're kind of halfway there because all you then have to do is just to figure out where you want to grow a little bit. So here and there. A few little extra branches. And you see, I'm kind of pressing with that one corner. Okay, press, press, and let that brush. And you can hear it. You hear my brush really working hard there to kind of crunch into that paint. You zoom you in. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now you know the formula. Pick a place, there's a nice little gap here. That was lucky, wasn't it? Okay, dropping a little center line. Different size to this tree, and it doesn't, it's these these are all different sizes. Tall, middle, smaller, medium. Nothing lines up, everything's different. Now you can see why I didn't bother putting loads of thick white paint here. I was thinking ahead a little bit there. I was thinking, you know what? If I end up putting a fir tree there, I don't want to have to fight through a load of white paint. Press in the back corner. Give them a little dark center first. Okay, we will make him skinny. Now you can get a little bit more kind of adventurous with where you grow the tree. You've got the basic tree, right? So you just have to give it a few little branches. Okay. And you notice I, I stay on the same corner all the time. I don't flip my brush backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards. You lose control of the shape very quickly. And you know, the trees that look a little bit like those sort of this like the bone through the middle okay so I'm just concentrating on this side of my of my painting tonight I'll do something over here in a minute so that. I got another little fan brush on the go here just in case I go into trouble right through my highlights And we already know that the, the light is coming from the right because my mountain is bright. So my highlights are going to be on the right and my shadows are going to be on the left. Now you want to make sure that your highlight color is thinner than the dark color. Now when you look at my dark color there you see it kind of shiny. A little bit too oily for my liking. And my, highlight, my, my highlighting colors are yeah, a little bit kind of dull looking aren't they? They don't have a lot of shine to them. This isn't too wet actually. That's why I struggle with my mountain a little bit tonight. Normally I wouldn't struggle like that. Because that's a little too oily. That's a little too dry. So I'm going to just add just a little hair of liquid white into that just to kind of soften it up a little bit. And when you load your brush with highlights, give it a little push. A little push right on the edge. And then you only have to touch with the edge of that brush. Just on the right side, mainly the right. And all I'm doing is I'm just touching the tops of my branches. There we go. There we go. Just kind of touch the tops of these branches. A little highlight. It's a bit bright. I 
happens if you overdo it a little bit like that. Magic eraser comes out, it's the dark colour we used. You can just stab it out and fix it that way. Okay, let's just finish off this little tree. Just here and there. Add a little highlight. I didn't even get a chance to put a tree trunk in tonight. He gets the same technique, pressing up. And that's where the highlights on those trees. They look pretty good. Okay. Folks, I'm sorry I overran. Oh, he needs a little friend. He got a, he got a little friend. There we go. I wouldn't leave him without a little friend. Well, just to finish off my little live stream, I ran out of time on the evening, so I thought I'd just finish here and put in some more on this side of my painting. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to extend my bushes across there, and I'm going to just put in a nice big fir tree on the other side. My brushes are still the same as before. I've got some nice dark colours on here. And just like before, I'm going to go through my, my dark colour one direction, pull it through, spring the brush apart and stab in some nice dark colours. And kind of have some fun with this. Just zoom in a little bit for you. There we go. And get him to join onto these little bushes here, and I'll and I'll repair that little piece there because I'm gonna I'm gonna smudge that little bush when I do it. Can't be helped, but I will fix him. Okay, so we got this little group of bushes joining on. Maybe I might have a little grass over here. We'll see. We'll see. There we go. So we've got a nice little group of bushes over here again. My edges are a nice shape and they're not just level and flat. They've got a nice bit of a rise or fall. There's a nice little bit of drama to the shape of them. Think about all these things when you're painting. You know, you want you want things to have a little bit of a kind of a curve to them and a shape to them. This kind of mirrors what's happening above so this shape and this shape look kind of like they fit together kind of nicely and they kind of fit one into the other quite well and again i'm going to go through my my highlight colors one direction pulling through give it a little push check the end of your brush and think about the highlights on the right hand side when the light's coming this way so the right side of these bushes is going to be brightest push so you're going to do the top and the right side first. And as I start to run out of paint, I'm going to start to do the, the middle of these bushes and a little bit down into the shadows. And I leave a little bit of shadow here and there. And I picked up a little dark, so I'm going to tap that off. Okay, you load your brush, make sure it's got a nice... Now have a look at that on the end of my brush. That, see that big nugget on there? That's going to get in me into big trouble there. So I just press that off on my palette. That's better. Get rid of that big nugget. It might still come back and get me, but less likely to. And I save a little shadow through there. Look more of a sparkler. Okay. I want that to show up a little more. Make that really pop in that corner. You make that a little brighter too. Got a little bit of Indian yellow coming through there, it looks kind of nice. Got a bit of a dark patch there. 
Let me just carefully sneak in. Add a little bit of a highlight there. So you're always working in layers. Back to my my dark colour. A little sap green, a little phthalo green. So my my shadow colour becomes a very dark green tone. And again, I think about the position of my of my tree. I got no snow here to fight over, so I want a nice sort of tree going through here. I don't really want him to look too much like the ones on the other side, but he's going to look similar. I think we're going to have a big fir tree. A big fir tree. Look at that. And again, get your brush with the handle up. Let me move my camera up a little bit for you. There we go. And I'm going to zoom you in more there we go there we go so you want to get your handle with the handle up you're doing little smiley trees and you want to use the fan shaped of the brush to help you so handle up and get on a corner get my light over the top of this there we go and just with the corner just touch a little upward push Want to hear that little crunch? I'm just doing the center of my tree. I want to get the middle done first. So I've got a skinny little tree, but I can give them a little bit of a Sunday lunch. I can pick and choose the branches I want to grow. I can make some grow a little more than others. I can carefully pick which ones I want to grow. And you can, you can figure out which way left or right you want to go with these branches. It's a nice, nice dark little tree. Back into my, switch back over to my highlight one. And again, light's coming this way. So it's mainly the right side of my tree. Let's kind of get a highlight. Darker, darker in the center. So much darker through the center. I wonder if that shows up. Yeah, a little more, a little more sort of a sparkler on the edges. There we go. You don't have to be everywhere, just here and there, just to really make things pop. And once again, I'm going to finish that off with a few little scratchy sticks and twigs. If I could find my palette knife, there's my palette knife. I found it. I thought I'd lost my palette knife. Wouldn't be the first time. Okay, and just in here, a few little scratchy sticks and twigs, and with the long blade of my knife, I'll just push up some paint. So you can create these little long grasses. People wonder how you paint them. You just take in your knife through the paint. You're just pushing it up out of those bushes. Put a few little sticks and twigs in there too. And I think we are done. Okay, so there we go. That's the finish of my little painting for tonight. I say this is the end of a live stream that I did. Um, this bit's being filmed without being live streamed, but it's just the end of my painting here. So I hope you've enjoyed all this. Um, tune in for some more uh, interesting paintings. I'm going to try and cover some more 
topics on my YouTube channel in future. So if you enjoy this, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment for me. I'll do my best to answer. If you've got any questions, please ask away. And if I can tell you, and if I know the answers, I'll happily share the information with you that I know, such as it is. But in the meantime, happy painting, people. Good night. <laughs>